What is up YouTube, this is Avall back here today, and today I've got you guys another speed duel deck profile. And today we are running a Gravekeeper's uh, speed duel deck profile with uh, Ishizu um, Ishtar, um, what the character's uh, Maverick's uh, sister uh, from the original Yu-Gi-Oh series. Um, yeah, so decided to do a deck profile for her for you guys, and as well always, before we get straight into the deck profile, we are gonna quickly do a card sleeve review right here. And today I have for you guys a very, very shiny, glittery card sleeve, uh, also officially um, from the OCG Konami, as you can see, Konami right here. And I'm not really sure of the name of these sleeves, but I guess I call it the 20th Anniversary uh, Millennium Sleeves. Um, as you can see, it's a very, very nice flat, uh, not flat gold, but glittery gold background all the way from top to bottom, all around the sleeves. You can see the shimmer, how it just sparkles really, really nice, like rainbow, as well as uh, they have um, some of these Millennium uh, symbols around. So we've got Star, which I'm not very sure what it is all about, but we have uh, the Millennium Puzzle. You can see here the Millennium Eye or the Millennium Symbol, and then just the basic icon of Yu-Gi-Oh cards scattered all across, organized as a pattern throughout the entire sleeves. And these are in really, really nice gold, which is really, really cool. And um, because of all these Millennium symbols, I just thought it suits very well with a Gravekeeper's deck because Gravekeeper is like very, a strong resemblance of um, the, the, uh, the Millennium Times when um, Yam Yami Yugi or like um, Adam in his uh, era where it's olden days, ancient uh, Egypt, Egyptian sort of thing going on with Gravekeepers and it just very, very matches very well nicely overall. And yeah, I just decided these um, sleeves would be really, really great. Um, these are relatively new. Uh, these came out sort of a half a year ago or so. And you know, they're all the way from Japan. So it's really, really great um, to showcase you guys these magnificent golden sleeves right here. They don't look as well as in, on the camera because of all that glare, but in real life, they look very nice and premium and high-end. And it matches very well with our um, playmat today the Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, official card game 20th anniversary playmat. If you haven't checked out that 20th, anniver 20th anniversary set that I've opened up, be sure to check that out as well. And here you go with all the sleeves um, put together. So very, very, very gold, very, very much bling bling. Um, but yeah, let's just go straight into the deck profile. So first of all, we have our uh, skill card, which is Gravekeeper's Lot, and it's a Shizu skill. Uh, basically, what it does is if you lose 1,800 or more life points, you can activate the skill during your next draw phase. And during your draw phase, you can search your deck for any Gravekeeper's card uh, from your deck, reveal it, and add it to your hand instead of drawing, And which is really, really great. Add any Gravekeeper card is just a great advantage for this deck whatsoever. Being able to search the key cards that you need to gain your upper hand to basically um, set up your boards or get even stronger to overcome and overwhelm your opponent. So that is our uh, skill card. So moving on to the main monsters of your deck. This is the very first monster you run. The boss monster of the Gravekeepers in this deck must 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 have the like the ace boss monster you will have is Gravekeepers Oracle and it's level 10, extremely powerful, uh, extremely powerful. Uh, high, high end level actually, and with 2,000 attack. So you guys be wondering, okay, a level 10 with 2,000 attack. What, what what's so great about it really? Well, it has a very, it has a hefty, hefty, juicy effect along this card, which is a lot, a lot to take in. So I'm just gonna go through this card slowly for you guys, so you guys know what this card really, really does and why it's so powerful. So first of all, you summon this card, you can tribute three monsters or one Gravekeeper's monster to tribute summon but not set. So you can tribute any three monsters to summon this card, but essentially you want to tribute uh, Gravekeeper's monsters to apply its uh, next effects coming up. And you have to tribute Gravekeeper's. And it's not it's not a really huge problem for this deck anyways because you'll be running pure Gravekeeper's in this deck. There's no other monsters that are not Gravekeeper's whatsoever. So basically, you know, it's not a huge problem for you whatsoever. And then so um, yeah, you, you tribute, uh, you can activate any of these following effects in the bullet points and resolve in sequence up to the number of Gravekeeper's monster tributed for its summon. So the first one is, uh, this card gains attack uh, of 100 for each uh, of the combined levels of those Gravekeeper's monsters. And most of your Gravekeeper's monsters are, you know, at least level 4 that I can remember of. So if you tribute 3, that's 
level 12, 12 levels in total, and immediately it gains 1200 attack right off the bat, which basically totals into 3200 attack, and essentially it is it has already surpassed uh, Blue Eyes White Dragon right there. And then second effect is bullet point effect is okay, but it destroys all set monsters your opponent controls. Very straightforward. Uh, it will be really great, great against flip effect decks eventually if there are more flip effects coming up. But you know, this, currently the second effect is just okay. So you really want to utilize the first and uh, the third effect, which is um, which is the most powerful effect I personally think is all monsters your opponent currently controls lose 2,000 attack and defense. This is not a continuous effect, so only uh, on the board currently at that time your opponent's monsters loses 2,000 attack and defense. I think it also it doesn't specifically say face up or face down, so I, I believe. Um, whether the monsters your opponent controls are face up or face down, they immediately lose that 2000 attack and defense, even if they're face down basically. So this card is extremely, extremely powerful, extremely strong whatsoever, boss monster of the deck, and you must run this card. Um, some people only run one, but I prefer to run two actually of these because um, you can, you know, being able to bring out two allows you to give a very strong upper hand once again or to basically use this effect once again and basically get even stronger and have a really powerful boss monster um, to the field. So I personally want to run two because I want to see this card as soon as possible and gain that upper hand right off the bat. And next we're running one Gravekeeper's Chief right here. Some people might be playing around the ratios with among these three. Maybe you run two Gravekeeper's Chief and then one Gravekeeper's Oracle or you know like me two Oracles and one Chief instead. And um, yeah, so mostly you would, to, in order to summon Gravekeeper's Oracle, you would only really tribute two Gravekeeper's monsters in this current situation. So, you know, I only play one, and what uh, Gravekeeper's Chief does is uh, you can only uh, control one face up uh, Gravekeeper's Chief anyway, so that's sort of why the reason I only run one. And your graveyard isn't affected by Necro Valley, but Necro Valley is not even relevant right now. This card doesn't exist in Speed Duels. Uh, but I think, I believe it's coming up very soon as a skill card eventually in. Uh, uh, the next packs. I can't remember if it's in Arena Lost Souls or the Attack from the Deep, but one of those sets we're gonna be getting Necro Valley, so that's very exciting. Uh, when this card is Tribute Summon, you can target one Grave Keeper's monster in your graveyard and special summon that target, basically. Uh, so, really, really good to just quickly revive one of your Grave Keeper monsters. And then next, we're running three Grave Keeper's Recruiter. And this card is extremely important in this deck because basically it is your searcher to bring out all your Grave Keeper's monsters that you need and gather your pieces together. So all this card is, if this card you control is sent to the graveyard, add one Grave Keeper's monster with 1500 or less defense from your deck to your hand. And as you can see, you can add Grave Keeper's Chief and Oracle already because Oracle only has uh, 1500 defense. Same goes, with, uh, same goes for Gravekeeper's Chief with only 1200. So you can search basically your powerful monsters with Gravekeeper's Recruiter. Extremely powerful, extremely great to basically extend your, and start out your combos from there. And then next we're running two Gravekeeper Priestesses. Uh, what she does is essentially, uh, while there's no face up field spell, um, the field is treated as Necro Valley, and all Gravekeeper monsters on the field gain 200 attack and defense regardless, which is really, really, really great. And um, yeah, oh, uh, now that I realize, I apologize why I mentioned earlier that I thought most of my Gravekeeper monsters are level 4, but actually, for now, most of them are actually level 3. But still being um, able to have uh, increase in 100 attack for each of those levels is still very, very strong. So you can still bring into Gravekeeper's Oracle into 3000. So I apologize earlier that I said Gravekeeper's Oracle can potentially become a uh, 3200 attack but also if you use gravekeeper's chief to to tribute to summon uh, gravekeeper's oracle you know his attack will be even stronger anyways so yeah at first i apologize because i thought these guys were level four but they're apparently only level three which i didn't realize okay anyways so yeah with necro valley um what is the purpose of necro valley but just keep in mind the field is treated as necro valley but it doesn't um it doesn't enable or becomes a uh, necro valley as its active effect. You know, basically, uh, Grave Gear's Priestess only makes the field name as necro valley for you to extend your necro valley combos, as we get to see later on. But then once again, I repeat, the necro valley if. Uh, the actual field spell effect is not activated, as in like it doesn't have the actual necro valley effect. Once again. Uh, and then to round off our monsters, we are running three Grave Keeper Soldier, and it's very simple effect, just 1500 attack, and it just inflicts piercing damage to your opponent. 
fairly simple. This is probably the strongest uh, key uh, level 4 monster that you probably want to run. Standard Gravekeeper monster that you would like to have. And of course, with rounding up those monsters. So this is all for our monster lineup. Once again, they're all Gravekeepers to basically give your advantage to Gravekeepers Oracle. So moving on to our spells, we're running two Hidden Temples of Necro Valley. It's a continuous spell card and it basically combos with uh, Gravekeeper Priestess because Gravekeeper Priestess gives you the name Necro Valley on the field and you need Necro Valley in, uh, to, to activate this effect. But you know, with Grave, Gravekeeper Priestess, you can basically just activate this card straight away because you can only activate this card with one Gravekeeper monster and Necro Valley are, are on the field. Well, with Gravekeeper Priestess, she acts as two of those requirements already because her herself is, grave, is a Gravekeeper card and also her effect is Necro Valley. So basically, with Gravekeeper Priest, equivalent, you can just activate this um, Hidden Temples of Necro Valley straight off the bat. And um, basically what it does is neither player can special summon monsters except for Gravekeeper's monsters, which is really, really, really strong. You know, it, it basically stops your opponents from summoning. Really great against, once again, the Blue-Eyes White Dragon deck. Uh, basically, it prevents your, your opponent from summoning Blue-Eyes White Dragon with the Lord of D combo, with the, the Flute of Summoning Dragon combo out there. Um, if either Gravekeeper's a monster or Necro Valley is not on the field, destroy this card. So yeah, basically just disables special summoning for your opponent, which is really, really great. Because special summoning is still fairly important in, in this uh, in speed duels right now. Next, we're running two copies of Gravekeeper Stealth. Basically, what it does is target two Gravekeeper's monsters in your graveyard, add those targets to your hand. This card cannot be negated by the effect of Necro Valley, so it's unaffected. Um, yeah, so basically bring back your recruiters, any of the uh, Gravekeeper monsters you would like to reuse, and quickly get them back to your hand, which is really great. And then next we're running uh, this equip spell, Wonder Wand, uh, really, really great. Equip only to spellcaster monster and all Gravekeepers are spellcasters, I believe. Yeah, all of them are spellcasters, as you can see. And uh, basically gives it a little bit of attack boost, which is really, really great, uh, 500 attack. Or you can send both to the graveyard and draw two cards with the advantage. So, you know, Gravekeepers monsters are relatively low in attack. So it's fairly important that you want to boost up um, their attack by 500, which definitely gives them an advantage whatsoever. And then if you put it, uh, equip, equip it to Gravekeeper's Oracle, he's going to get much more stronger and overwhelming in terms of attack. And then last but not least, to round off our spells, we're running to uh, Rio Cruz. Um, you know, some people might not run this um, spell. You know, they might want to run something else such as more uh, Hidden Temples of Necro Valley and then an extra copy of Gravekeeper's Priest to give like the special summon lockdown. Um, but overall, um, I believe uh, Gravekeepers uh, without Oracle are very, very uh, underwhelming in terms of attack and they don't not very strong. So they really, really need some attacking advantage. And Ryoku, um, Ryoku just basically gives that attack power advantage by having uh, the attack of your opponent's monster and then have one of your monsters gain that equivalent half of the attack. So, you know, very subjective and optional depending on this card. You might want to play other cards and shuffle around the um, ratios instead. But last but not least, we're just running one trap card in this deck. It's basically Rite of Sprite. And as I mentioned before, you might more run and not, not run Ryoku, so you can run three of Rite of Sprites or maybe two and then play around with the ratios and the numbers a bit. But what, what Rite of Sprite does is you just basically target one Gravekeeper and your monster and your event, special summon that target. And this effect can't be uh, as unaffected by Necro Valley, so Necro Valley doesn't stop you from using this card. And once again, Necro Valley is currently not in Speed Tools just yet, but you know when it does come out, I will make another deck profile update for the Gravekeepers. Um, what basically Necro Valley does, it basically stops people from you know taking any card advantages with effects from the graveyard. But once again, this card is not existent in Speed Tools just yet, but it will be very very soon, and then we'll get a quick update when that time comes. And that basically rounds off the entire Gravekeeper's deck profile. I hope you guys find it useful and enjoying this deck profile. It's really, really fun to play, to lock down your opponent, and also being able to summon um, Gravekeeper's Oracle really, really just gives that advantage and makes you feel like, oh, you're really, really strong and it's really hard to overcome. Really creates, creates good pressure onto your opponent. So yeah, this is basically the Gravekeeper's deck profile. Once again, if you guys do find it useful and enjoy, uh, definitely leave a like, give this video a thumbs up, support the Evolt channel by subscribing. There's many, many awesome Yu-Gi-Oh! Speed 2 deck profiles on the channel, as well as Yu-Gi-Oh! openings. Be sure to check those videos out. 
and yeah we'll be uploading very very often with all these content really excited to show you guys more more cards upcoming and more deck profiles as the speed duel decks uh, or the speed duel format evolves and expands into greater greater and also you guys comment down below on what sort of cards you guys would play in the gravekeepers deck what sort of cards you would include and what sort of cards you would take out as well so use my deck as just a basic resource um to your deck and as inspiration uh, as well so once again, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. As always, you guys have a great day, great night, wherever you are. And this is about signing out.